Advent Stories with Miss Courtney. Episode 2, Mouse's Christmas Gift. Hi friends, I'm Miss Courtney and I am so, so glad you're here for another Advent Story. Last week we read Waiting for Christmas and we learned about how Gerard and his family observe Advent in Germany and we also got to make some delicious bread. How was yours? We learned that Advent is all about waiting, but that waiting is hard work. So we decided to practice our waiting together by reading Advent stories. The second Advent story that we're going to be reading together is called Mouse's Christmas Gift. Look how cute he is. This book was written by Mindy Baker, and that adorable mouse was drawn by Dow Umrich. Let's read. Mouse shivered in the drafty sanctuary of the church. The room looked bleak and bare. Where was Parson? Mouse scurried over to Parson's empty study and glanced at the calendar. December 23rd. Something wasn't right. As he crept back to the sanctuary, Mouse glanced around the room and realized what was missing. In the storage closet, he burrowed through boxes, searching until he found the right one. Could he arrange the delicate figurines? Pulling and prodding, lugging and lifting, Mouse worked until he finished the job. When he was done, sweet baby Jesus slept in the manger. Beside him stood Joseph and Mary, God's faithful servants. There was a magnificent angel that announced that the greatest message of joy the earth would ever know. The lowly shepherds and sheep chosen to hear and spread the good news were there also. And last but not least, the wise men from the east who followed the star and brought gifts to the king of kings. But something still didn't feel right. Where could Parson be? Mouse ducked through the crack in the wall. He raced through his tunnels and his wet nose poked into the small living quarters in the back of the church. Parson, your fever is worse, said his wife as she brushed her hand across his forehead. Parson began to cough. <coughs> I guess I have no choice. He mumbled as he pulled the quilt over his thin, shivering frame. Mouse watched Parson's wife nail a note to the door of the old church. Christmas Eve service canceled. Mouse's tail drooped. Parson had never canceled a Christmas Eve service before. Mouse had to do something, but what? What do you think Mouse is going to do? Back to the boxes, he tripped and fell on something hard and made of wax. What do you think it was? He had an idea. Mouse set a sturdy candle in the window of the old church and lit its wick. The glow filled the room. But would anyone see it? That night, Mouse stared at the nativity in the soft glow of the candlelight as he drifted off to sleep. Across town, Alexander Stevens peered out his window into the starry night. The streets of the village looked deserted. The decorations stayed tucked away. Grim, worried villagers repeated the phrase, no money for Christmas. Alexander sighed. <sighs> Did it really take money to celebrate Christmas? In the distance, he saw the silhouette of the old church, its strong steeple pointing to heaven. He blinked and then blinked again. Was that a light in the window? While his parents slept, Alexander stepped softly into the crisp air and gathered pine branches and holly, forming a circle. He ran to the church door and hung his meager wreath in place. Joy to the world. 
Alexander whispered to himself as he headed back home. The next day, Lizzie Jenkins noticed Alexander's wreath on the door of the church. She pointed and said to her sister, that pine tree looks bare standing there next to the wreath. Let's tie our hair ribbons on its branches to decorate for Christmas. From his forge, the blacksmith watched hair ribbons, quilting squares, and scraps of fabric appear on the tree as many passerby stopped to add a decoration. He began to heat the shape of a piece of scrap metal into a shining star. When the blacksmith thought that no one was looking, he carried a ladder over to the tree and set the star in its place. Out her window, Widow Bartholomew's eyes studied the blacksmith as he placed the star on top of the tree. A smile crept to her face. She looked in her cupboard and spotted a jar of strawberry jam she had saved for a special occasion. Then she set to baking bread. That night, on Christmas Eve, a small group of villagers gathered in front of the darkened church. Mouse peered out of the window and his heart began to pound. They came! He raced up the doorframe and unlocked the latch. The townspeople talked and whispered in front of the church. It's been a while since I've been to church. Where is Parson and his wife? I think he's been ill. They tried the door and found it unlocked. I could light a fire in the stove, said the blacksmith. I've brought my bread and strawberry jam to share, added widow Bartholomew. The villagers sat in the pews and looked at each other. What next? We have our voices, said Mrs. Stevens. So they began to sing. Parson heard the music from his bed. What was going on? He wrapped himself in his quilt and walked to the door, with his wife following behind. As they entered the chapel, someone began reading from the Bible. Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census be taken of the entire Roman world. Parson sat down in a pew and stared. Why had the people come? Who set up the nativity? Had he left the church unlocked? He closed his eyes and listened. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all of the people. Today in the town of David, a savior is born. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This is a sign to you. You will find a baby in cloth lying in a manger. Parson smiled. Good news of great joy. The baby Jesus is the savior for all people. He fills our greatest needs. Mouse watched from his home in the wall, a smile on his face. He nibbled a bit of bread and strawberry jam. Christmas Eve. All was well. What a sweet, sweet story. I just love that one. It makes me feel so warm inside. That thoughtful little church mouse knew that something wasn't right when he went out to the sanctuary and there were no Christmas decorations and there was no pastor around either. So he did everything he could to help. And then all the people from the little town did what they could do to help too. Everyone was helping. And with everyone pitching in together, they made the special Christmas Eve service happen. And it brought everyone so much joy. 
not only the people in the community that came to the service, but also the people that helped make the service happen. Helping brought them joy too. Because when you help others, it makes everyone feel joy. And that makes God super happy. I hope you'll come back next week when we read our last Advent story together. It's going to be about a birthday party for Jesus. You won't want to miss it. Bye, friends. See you next time.